Well, I know this ecosystem very well. I've been here probably 25 times over the last uh, seven or eight years. I know the guides, I know the conditions, I know animal behavior, the elephant behavior, but we're still playing with nature and it could transpire that nature doesn't help us this week. There are a couple of very special elephants that are called big tuskers and we know where one of them is. Once you've seen Tim, there's no point doing a portrait of really any of the other elephants here because he's just so magnificent. So the area behind me is normally the biggest dust bowl in the world. Amboseli means place of dust, but as you can see, it's now a swamp. I've never known it to be like this. Your car is gonna get stuck all the time because it's just gonna sink into the mud, but you never know. Gotta be relentless, never quit. Well, we've broken down and there's, you see over there, there's three lions, well, lioness and two cubs. They're moving quicker than we are. Go on! Yay! This isn't shallow. I wouldn't want to drive myself. Even going one mile is a bit of a challenge. So I guess this is another consequence of the very unusual weather. But that's nature, eh? Well, we're quite close to one of the biggest elephants in the world, but He's with two other bulls and trying to get close to three of them is dangerous. There's quite a lot of vegetation there, you don't want to surprise him. So we're very close, but very far. So this is the third time that we've gone specifically with the mission of trying to get Tim. I think we're going to get a lot of low directional strong light, which I want to work against rather than with. And if you're going to photograph the world's most famous elephant. Why do you want to photograph him in dull light? You want to photograph him in fantastic light. It's one of those rare times when things are coming together quite nicely. I didn't want to get too close. That thing, that peculiar heartbeat. And I think I was as close, given them on the ground as well. 200 isn't a massive telephoto. And the 200 F2 is a quality event. So if you got it with the DA50, you'll get a medium format quality. The backdrop was clean, which was nice. It would have been nice to have been facing the other way with Kilimanjaro in the background. I was slightly downhill from him as well, and that's quite handy because it magnifies him a little bit. The fact that the light was coming down meant that the ivory was so white. I mean, that's not really an elephant, is it? It's a mammoth. It's all right, it's a nice portrait. It's certainly exciting. In a way, this week is a microcosm of my life in that there are, there are two approaches that I have to visually connect with people, the literal one and the one where it's, it's very much staged. I have to wear this. <laughs> you don't, you're used to it. But you, it's a shame that cameras can't smell. This is probably the best view from here, but I don't want to shoot with the light. You three guys are on this hill, okay? But you'll be spread out by about 10 meters each. I just wanted everything behind them to be consistent. So I needed to have raised elevation. I didn't want to compromise on focus. I wanted as many of the people in focus as possible. So I had to get them to try and keep quite still. I think the black suits worked against the white of the rubbish. It is an extraordinary place. So the deputy lieutenant of the gang, he had a strong face. And I wanted to capture that close up. 35 millimeter uh, 1.4 is a great uh, wide angle lens for portraiture because you can get stuff around him. And I took him in a dark alleyway of a slum. Okay, I want you to look right there and come forward, come forward. That's it. You don't want to photograph, I don't think, a gangster sitting in the Intercontinental Hotel. You want to photograph a gangster in a back alleyway and he looks sinister as hell. He's not someone that you'd really want to cross. And I think that's conveyed in the image.